All right, this is a follow-up on Lesson 9A where we calculated the roll and pitch angles using the accelerometer. I was using the ATAN function in that example, and I wanted to make you aware, if you weren't already, that C++ has two functions for calculating the inverse tangent. These, there's ATAN and ATAN2. I wanted to take a look at the difference between the two. Right. Uh, so out here in the repository, Right, is where you'll find these examples under module MPU 6050, lesson nine. All right, and so just a reminder, right, the tangent is calculated as the sine of an angle divided by the cosine of an angle. We've got a chart here then showing all four quadrants of the Cartesian coordinate system, right, what the range of angles uh, for the tangent is within those quadrants, and then these, uh, the sign positive or negative of each one of these functions within that quadrant, right? Just as a refresher there, right? So what the ATAN function does is here's its prototype, right? It takes one argument of type double and it returns the inverse tangent then in radians as type double. Right? And so when you, we pass the tangent, just one piece of information, we know that while the tangent is calculated as a sine divided by the cosine, what we're passing it is this ratio, right? Just this one number, this calculation. And when it gets just the one number, it can't distinguish necessarily what quadrant this is in, right? Because it doesn't have the sign, or the, so the sign, I mean, when I say sign, positive or negative, right, of these particular values, it only has the ratio. Uh, so this ratio could possibly be negative or it could be positive. Right. When it's positive, it's going to give you a value in, in quadrant one. When it's negative, it'll give you a value in quadrant four. Right. And so that's why it says the return value is in the interval of minus pi over two to plus pi over two radians, because it, it can just, it will use the sign of the ratio, right? When it's negative to assume it's in quadrant four, give you an angle in quadrant four. When it's positive, when that argument X is positive, Right, it will then assume that it is in quadrant one. Right? And you know, if you're working uh, in a function like where you're just drawing graphics on the screen and maybe you only have one quadrant because uh, your origin is in the corner of the screen, then tangent will serve you really well. But if you're working in an environment right, where you need, where the origin is in the center, excuse me, and you need to know the exact quadrant, we'll want to use ATAN2. And of course, then ATAN2 requires two arguments, the y and the x. So another way of defining right, the tangent of a function is y divided by x. And in this case then, because it has both of these arguments and it has the sign positive or negative of each argument, it can then determine which quadrant this angles in and give you the appropriate angle, right? So it says then that right, the, uh, the return value is in the interval of minus pi to plus pi radians. Uh, there can be domain errors, right? Uh, simply because the tangent is not defined everywhere. And typically with ATAN2, you'll see an, a warning that there could be domain, domain errors where both X and Y are zero. And that also depends on how your device has implemented uh, the uh, floating point arithmetic. Uh, so we'll take a look at whether or not the Arduino is going to give us a domain error. Uh, it, it, there could be range errors as well due to underflow. Underflow means the number is simply too small to, to be represented after rounding. Right? And so I've given you a link here to how C++ handles various errors. Right? But we'll just take a look at a couple of programs and see how the Arduino is going to handle it. Right, so if you want to open up then these, this first program, ATAN versus ATAN2, let me pop this over on the screen. You have it in the repository. Pop this up here. All right. Uh, so this is just a function that's going to print out. It's going to uh, take two values, X and Y, and it's going to print out then the value of ATAN versus ATAN2. And so all we do here in setup is, right, is I've got four different angles. 
So for each quadrant, this should be 45, right? this should be uh, 135, let's see, minus 135 and minus 45, right, for the four quadrants. Loop won't do anything. So all the code's going to run here in the setup function. Right? While I'm talking, I should upload this to the Arduino. Someday I'll learn to do that. Let's just look at the serial monitor output. And minimize this. All right. All right. So we can see then. Oh, why is that so poorly formatted? Uh, let me clear the output. Oh, my baud rate didn't match. 9600. Let's reset this. Okay. That's why we had errors. All right. I hadn't changed the serial monitor. So my baud rate was 9600. All right. So we ran, we ran this. So we can see that when X is 1 and Y is 1, ATAN returns an angle of 45 degrees, and I'm simply converting uh, the radians to degrees, simply because I'm more familiar with the degrees. So ATAN and ATAN2, because it's in the first quadrant, both return the same result. Right, but now when X is minus 1 and Y is positive 1, we're in quadrant 2, ATAN is going to tell us minus 45, which is a quadrant 4 angle. ATAN2 will tell us 135 degrees. Similarly, when we're in quadrant 3, ATAN is going to tell us we're in quadrant one with 45 degrees. ATAN two tells us we're in quadrant three with minus 135 degrees. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, we'll see that ATAN and ATAN two both give us the same correct angle, right? Remember we said ATAN is only capable of deciding quadrant one or quadrant four based on positive or negative signs. ATAN two is giving us the uh, correct quadrant. All right. So if it's important to you, right, to know the correct quadrant, right, you're going to want to use a tan too. All right. I've got another example here that will open. So we've also got this a tan versus a tan two undefined. Sorry. Really. Sorry, I'm fighting with this, not wanting to leave one screen for the other. All right. All right. Uh, so we're going to print the angles again. This is the uh, same function. Here in setup now, we're going to try then to see what happens if we specify an angle of 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and minus 90 degrees. Right? Because uh, we're told that the tangent is undefined at these locations, but has the... So have these libraries been able to handle that? Right? Because there are ways that you can write code when you detect something near this to actually then estimate right, that angle. And so let's see if they handle that. Uploading here, pop up the serial monitor. Uh, let's clear our output and restart this. Okay, so now we can see, right, when x and y are zero, we'd expect an angle to be zero. A tan returns not a number, so it can't handle that, right? But a tan two can handle it, it tells us it's zero. When x is zero and y is one, that should be 90 degrees. Both a tan and a tan two return 90 degrees. Right? When x is minus one, y is zero, then we would expect 180 degrees. Well, we already know that a tan can't handle a quadrant mm, quadrant two three value, right? But a tan two can give us that. Finally, then when we're in the fourth quadrant, negative ninety degrees, so x is zero, y is minus one. A tan and both a tan two can handle the negative ninety, right? But a tan cannot handle the zero. So again, if you think you're going to have angles in those ranges, you want to use a tan two. Of course, you have to have both the x and the y parameters available. If all you have is a ratio, then you're forced to use a tan, and you might have to do some additional coding if you were to think that you were going to have an angle near zero that returns not a number. Right. Uh, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, right? A tan versus a tan two. Then we'll take a look in the next one at lesson nine B, where we use a tan two uh, to calculate our accelerometer angle. All right. Thanks for watching.